Today I'm going to show you how I made this oak and cherry media cabinet featuring a Kumiko panel in the front to hide the subwoofer. This cabinet was made using traditional Chinese joinery techniques uh, which involves no glue and this Kumiko panel was entirely cut by hand. This is the wood for this project. Um, it's going to be made out of oak and cherry. These are mostly uh, eight-fourths uh, sawn uh, boards that, that are four feet long. From the SketchUp drawing of the piece of furniture, I've extracted a couple of other drawings that show the various parts, and I've marked them with the, the lengths and the, the, the dimensions. I also made a checklist of all the different parts that I need to cut. For each board, I've uh, attached some masking tape and just written on like what I'm going to try and cut out of that board. Um, and then on the end of the board, I've marked sort of just very roughly like, where the cuts are going to be. Um, just helps to avoid making any mistakes just by being very clear about exactly how each board is going to get used um, and how we're going to make all the pieces that we need uh, out of the lumber that we have. But I have now finished dimensioning all of the oak. So these are all the pieces uh, for the frame, all uh, cut and dimensioned correctly. I've now completed the joinery for the two side frames. Uh, you can see this is like a through modest tenon here uh, with a bit of a, uh, a rebate as well. I'll show you how that goes together in a second. This very long tenon goes right the way through that leg and at the other side it has an, another uh, like through mortise and tenon joint uh, so that, that pin comes out the back. Um, I'll just show you how that assembles in a second. At the other end of the leg uh, I have uh, like a dovetail uh, joint um, which you know joins the two legs together at the top. Like this. And now you can see where that comes through. So moving down to the other end of the leg, um, there's a dovetail in the end of the leg and the corresponding uh, male part of the dovetail here. So then the next thing is to fit those together. So we'll just slide this dovetail in here. Again, it's reasonably tight. I mean, it might require a little bit of tapping to get it to go in. The 
two side frames assembled. That's one side. And then over here, I've got my other side. I can now join these together with this piece uh, that goes um, along the front. the top. You notice there's two pins sticking out the top, that's to attach the, the tabletop, and then this piece goes along the front, and then it attaches to the other leg, kind of in the same way. This here is the frame for the top of the table. Uh, you can see that it has uh, like a through mortise and tenon here, uh, with a, a mitered lap joint uh, built in, and on the other side of it, you can see there's also the, like the lap, and then the um, the tenon and, and you see also if you turn this over you can see that the tenon has a hole cut in it uh, like this and and there's a, a similar hole uh, cut into this half um, and these holes are there because the pins go into those from the top of the legs uh, to, to pin the tenon into the mortise and make them you know so they can't come apart this joint goes together just like this the tenon just slides into the mortise. Um, the two halves of the lap joint come together to form a, a nice mitre on the corner. <clears throat> it's a little bit tight. I'm gonna to have to get a mallet and just tap it in the last little bit. see the mitre on the corner and on the other side you can see the hole that goes all the way through uh, the mortise and the tenon uh, where the pin from the leg goes in to hold the whole thing together. So the next thing I need to do now that I've got some of my frame going I need to put some panels inside these open areas here at the sides uh, on the base and also on the top and those are going to come from this cherry so my next job is to process this cherry uh, to cut it into quarter inch thick uh, slices. five slices of a quarter of an inch each and then one of those I split lengthways and I've arranged them like this so that um, when I put these three together um, I'm going to end up with two pieces which are 15 inches wide by 48 inches long. The two remaining pieces of cherry here which are also two inches thick I'm going to cut it in the same way uh, to make the sides of the cabinet. From one of my two inch boards, I got these five quarter inch boards. And then from the other two inch board, I got these three half inch boards. The, the half inch ones will be the base, that takes some weight. Uh, the quarter inch ones will be for the sides, because they're just decorative. So I, I used these two router bits to, uh, to route the edges of these thin boards before joining them. Just because like edge on edge, it's difficult to get the top surface aligned properly and also creates a little bit more gluing area. So these were really good. So 
So the end result is a, a shape somewhat like this on the edge of the boards and you can see if we slide the boards together uh, it'll just help the top surface to uh, remain in, in registration. I don't have a drum sander and uh, this board is too wide to fit in my plane so I'm having to resort to the orbital sander for this. So the top is now assembled and it's coming together pretty nicely. This is a reasonably nice corner, reasonably good mitre and you can see that the, the top is also very tight to the frame. I'm ready to start assembling this joint but um, just before I put it together I wanted to show you what it looked like uh, when it's apart. It's actually pretty complicated. There's a, there's a slot down here in the leg uh, where you know, this, this piece uh, slots into. Um, there's a slot along here. Uh, this is where this is where the base goes, the, the base board. Uh, the base board goes around here too. There's also a slot at the back for this piece, which is actually the side of the cabinet. So the, the side of the cabinet will slide into that slot. Going around to the other side, uh, you can see here. Um, a, this is a dovetailed section here which the toe kick will slide onto. Uh, this long tenon will protrude through the front of the piece of furniture. And, th and then there's also a dog of dado here and a cut out here for the base. So quite a lot of complicated uh, joints to cut out of here on the bottom of this leg. Um, I'm still gonna sh chamfer these corners, so that still needs to happen. Um, but yeah, this, this joinery is uh, almost complete now. The back leg is quite different from the front leg. Um, it still has a slot, uh, a slot here. Um, for this piece of wood to slide into. Uh, it also has uh, a mortise hole here um, because this, this long tenon you know, has to go through there. Uh, it also has this cut here for the base um, and the base is also cut uh, into, um, into this piece here. Um, it also of course has a slot here um, for, the, for the back and the, the slot for the back of course extends up this other piece that plugs into it. So, yep, this, this is what the back leg looks like. I put Osmo on all the panels and I'm just kind of stacking them up randomly like this. Um, just waiting for all that Osmo to dry. I'm not quite done yet because I still have to put the, uh, the stuff inside the cabinet and I still have to fit the back onto it. Um, but yeah, it's almost almost complete at this point. It's looking, looking pretty good. The next part of this project involves building a Comico panel to go in the front of the furniture to cover the subwoofer. I've made a drawing of the Comico panel here. You can see there are many hundreds of very small pieces of wood that you have to cut. In order to cut them, I've made a few jigs. This jig here is for making the very thin strips of wood that you need. Um, we need all of the thin strips to be precisely the same thickness, so 
uh, this jig here, uh, like my, my smoothing play will fit into here and slide you know, smoothly through. Um, then I can use these precision spacers uh, in this gap here and put this piece of oak on top to make this piece of oak exactly the, the, the correct height so that when I put a piece of wood in here and then run my plane along it, uh, it will plane this piece of wood down to a very precise thickness. The next jig that I made uh, is this one. Um, there's actually two of these, uh, a mirror image of each other. Um, and this is for making the thin, for cutting little slots in the thin strips of wood. Um, so the way we, we use these is that uh, we slacken off these pieces here, we place a piece of our Kumiko in here. So it doesn't matter what thickness of Kumiko we've got, just needs to be all the same. And then tighten this down. So now we know the, the gap here is exactly the thickness of the piece of wood. And uh, then we just put a little piece of wood in here. And then we take our Kumiko and we slide it up to here. And then we take a saw and uh, we put the saw in here. And then now, now it enables us to cut at the exact 60 degree angle uh, through these little pieces of wood. And I actually installed some magnets on either side of these blocks. So the saw will actually stick to either the left side <coughs> or the right side. So when you saw, you don't have to try to keep the saw like vertical or anything like that. You just have to move it backwards and forwards. Uh, it will be in the correct spot. The final jig that I made um, is this one. This one has a little knob you can, you can unscrew and you can move this uh, stop block uh, backward and forward and lock it down where you want it to be. Um, and then you place your Kimiko strip in here and you use a block plane. This one's too long, but you use a block plane along the end of the wood like this and it allows you to chamfer the ends of the thin strips of wood. So using, using these four jigs and probably a lot of time, uh, I am now going to attempt to make this Kumiko panel. So according to my Kumiko design, the long diagonals are about 19 and a quarter inches. Uh, the shorter ones are down to only one and three quarter inches. Obviously it varies throughout the panel. My first step is going to be to run these pieces of wood through the plane, just to make sure they're the same thickness. My next step is to take this oak and to cut it into thin strips on the bandsaw first. So I've set up my bandsaw with a fence here. I'm going to run my wood through like this uh, in order to cut these very thin strips. The other piece of wood exactly like this one, which was just over two inches wide, uh, produced these 11 strips. So one thing that I learned already is that wood like this, where the wood, where the wood grain changes direction uh, along the length of the wood, this kind of wood is just not suitable for Kumiko. Uh, it's very, very hard to plane because they're changing wood direction. Um, and I had a couple of pieces that snapped whilst they were being planed. So even though I have like just enough uh, strips at this point, um, I think I'm going to cut up uh, one more piece of wood for spares. So I cut this very thin piece of wood uh, into a, a wedge shape that matches the, 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 the angle of my saw because it's narrower at this side and wider at this side and I want to cut to a consistent depth. So you can see that now uh, with this wedge in place um, the distance here and here is the same. My Kamiko strips are 12.75 millimeters wide so one third of that would be 4.2 millimeters so i took this uh this depth uh, digital depth thing set it to 4.2 millimeters uh, so that'll be the gap now at the at the bottom there like that that'll be 4.2 millimeters and then i'm going to use that on my jig to set the height of my saw before i start cutting these strips <clears throat> i need to make sure that one end of the strip has a 60 degree uh, bevel on two sides like this. Uh, you'll see later uh, how that works in the jig. The 
here you can see this one now has 60 degree bevels on it so that one's ready and now I just need to do uh, the other 60 sticks. We slide the Kumiko strip in here until that 60 degree bevel on the edge it's this 60 degree end stop um, and now we can cut it across here. I just need to go down until the piece of wood uh, there you go it won't cut anymore that means it's at the correct depth uh, that should have cut it uh, eight millimeters eight and a half millimeters deep okay that's uh, that should be two-thirds of the depth of the wood for the next cut, we need to put a Kumiko strip across this gap here. And then we need to take the one that we, we just cut and we need to put it in here and slide this strip into the cut that we just made. Like that. Get this hard up against there. That should be three quarters of the way through. <clears throat> now we have to advance it by one position. So we need to uh, take out this little piece of wood that I just cut. We need to move this up to that new slot that we just made. Good that it's a tight fit. Maybe a little too tight. Maybe I should loosen it off a tiny bit. Okay, so now the spacing between this one, this next one is going to be exactly right. Now I can go ahead and cut a whole batch of strips at once. <laughs> Do it by hand like this, don't need a mallet. Very thin piece of wood. So I've finished all of the diagonal pieces. These pieces go diagonally. These are all cut exactly the same way, uh, to two thirds of the depth. And, and now I'm just starting to do the vertical pieces. Uh, the vertical pieces go in the middle and they're cut from both sides to uh, one third of the depth. I finished cutting all the strips. It's taken me forever, uh, but I now have uh, 12 that I need for the panel, plus one spare, just in case it one breaks. And um, enough of the, these are the vertical ones, and enough of these diagonal ones to, to make all the diagonals this way and this way. So it's time to start assembling the frame. So I'm going to start by putting a diagonal one here, like this, and then picking up a vertical one. Uh, this should slot into here. So that's going to be like that. And then there's a very short diagonal one. And that should go into here. And this should lock into place. <coughs> well, no glue required. So it fits pretty nicely if I zoom into this very first uh, joint here. You can see that um, all the, the pieces come together um, with, with no gaps. Um, and I had to tap it in with a mallet, so this doesn't really need any glue. This is going to hold together just fine um, by friction only. So, as you can see, I started by putting two vertical pieces at either end, and then I run some diagonals from basically corner to corner. Um, and now what I'm going to do is put all the other verticals in and then I'm going to put all the other diagonals in. It's coming together pretty nicely. I've got now four diagonals this way. I've got three diagonals this way. So I need to put this, this diagonal in here. This will be all of the long diagonals done and then I just need like shorter pieces and then I need to fill out all the diagonals on the other side so uh, let's just finish this one first so it's a little fiddly to get them in the right spot 
lining up all of these joints all the way along. I've got to say a, a bigger panel would be a lot more difficult to do. Um, this, this is a relatively small panel. It's already uh, quite tricky actually to get all of these joints to line up all the way along these strips. But I do start to see some hexagons emerging. So I'm quite encouraged by how well, how well it's going. Um, it does require a bit of tapping. They are fairly tight. That's okay. The rest of this piece of furniture has no glue. So if this can also be done without glue, that's just a bonus. Now if I finished doing all the diagonals this way, and of course I have all the verticals, so um, it's now time to turn it over so that I can put the, the diagonals in that go in the opposite direction. One thing that's become very clear to me uh, whilst assembling this panel is that the spacing between these has to be so precise um, for these to fit together in both to all three directions all at the same time um, to make these triangles perfectly equilateral so yeah the, uh, I, I, I did a pretty good job um, but you have to be like super duper accurate um, when cutting these strips to make sure these spacings are absolutely perfect or, or else this stage is actually quite tricky so this is the very last piece to put in um, to make the grid and then of course I have to trim the edges so the back of the panel so uh, but this is translucent glue so you know hopefully um, it won't show anyway it's sandwiched in here um, between these two uh, pieces of sheet material uh, and clamped down um, and I'm gonna leave it like that overnight uh, that might sort of make it flat uh, maybe um, but for sure will make it much more stable so that I can uh, cut off the edges more easily. And I do have a few strips left over, uh, which is not a bad thing. So a little bit of extra work, of course, cutting all the slots in these strips that I didn't use. Um, but I highly recommend uh, cutting some spares. I had quite a few breakages. To make the frame, I found some uh, leftover pieces of oak and I cut this kind of C-channel into them, uh, just using a red a bit. So those four pieces um, are going to go around the edge uh, of the Kumiko. So I finished um, making a frame around my panel. Um, I did cheat a little bit. <laughs> I used some glue and uh, you can see I, I put in a, one nail uh, there just to hold the pieces together uh, because yeah, it was too difficult to make the frame um, hold together firmly without any, any glue or nails. So I cheated slightly on this part. To make the pattern, I found some different colored pieces of wood. Uh, this is some beech, some paduke, uh, some wenge and some cherry and uh, I planed them all to exactly the same thickness so uh, that's that and then I used the bandsaw to cut them into thin strips and then I'm going to put the thin strips on this jig to make them exactly the same thickness and smooth on both sides. So these slightly thicker ones are very light colours made of beech, these ones are made of cherry, uh, these orangey coloured ones are paduke and these very dark ones are made from wenge. So hopefully these four different colours, um, I'll be able to make some kind of interesting pattern. Let's see.
after sawing these little pieces, I needed to just get them nicely smooth and whatever, um, slightly more perfect. So I did try using this block plane and using it across here, but even though it's a really nice plane and it's super sharp, uh, it was actually really hard to plane this larger size surface. So, uh, so finally what I ended up doing um, was just using a, a, a file like this, uh, because the, the sawing was already pretty accurate. So um, anyway, I have now made um, a whole pile of these, and um, they are over, over there. So I now have all of these little blocks of wood, um, which I can use to make the first part of my pattern. first three done. It's not very sharp at the bottom. I'm going to have to use a chisel, I think, just to make that cleaner at the bottom, but otherwise it's, uh, it's kind of what we need. So this is how the three test pieces fit in. So they have 30 degrees at one end, which goes into the corners, and they have 60 degrees on the other end where the three pieces meet. So they go like this. It's kind of fiddly to put them in. And they're a pretty tight fit, like they only just, they only just fit. Okay, they go in like that. I took one of my test pieces and I put it in this jig here like this, um, so I can, I can use this uh, to cut all the other pieces to the exactly the correct length. At this point, I have cut 100 pieces of cherry there, there they are, four blocks of 25. I also have a few extra pieces here. Um, but I still actually have a few more strips of cherry and because I haven't started on the Paduke yet. So altogether, I think we're gonna end up with about 150 strips, 150 uh, Asinoha pieces uh, of each type of wood. So there's my original three pieces, which I tried in the grid. And uh, now I have a, a pretty decent sized pile of pieces cut to the exact same length. I'm doing the 60 degree bevels first, placing it in the bevel, taking my block plane, taking most of the wood off with the block plane, seems to be the easiest way. And then when I've got it somewhere close, I find that finishing it off with the chisel seems to give the, the most precise result.
So let's see if we can assemble these three pieces together to make a triangle. So they need to <clears throat> have the bevel edges inwards so they go like that. So I need to put this one in here like this. Okay, there we have one triangle. So now I can complete my first hexagon of Gomo. It's a pretty tight fit. Okay, so that's it for this video. Had fun making it. Another beautiful piece of furniture in my house. I'm so proud of the fact that this has no uh, glue and um, you know I can take it apart, I could redesign it, put some shelves in here if I wanted to, put it back together again. Uh, the fact that it's reversible I think is great. Um, I love the Kamiko panel. This was really hard. This took uh, about a hundred hours of work actually just, just to make this panel. Um, but it hides the subwoofer beautifully, but the sound can still come through, so that's perfect. I think I'll put some wine racks in here, actually. Uh, maybe just make a freestanding wine rack, rather than standing the wine like this. Uh, but overall, I'm very happy with this. I think it's a very nice piece of furniture, and I hope you enjoyed watching me make it. <laughs>